everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Busan, South Korea with ISA webinar. Today, my colleague Gracie and I will be presenting to you about one of the newest ISA program locations, and we will explain what makes ISA study abroad programs there so amazing. We'll talk about why study abroad in Busan and why choose ISA, what programs and scholarships ISA offers in Busan, and much more. This webinar is intended for students, their parents, and university advisors. We are so much excited to share this information with you today. If you have any questions during our presentation, please feel free to leave them in the chat box and we'll be happy to answer them near the end. We will start off by first introducing ourselves. My name is Katya Kunz and I'm the South Korea Site Specialist. I work with students during the pre-departure process and help them with academics, courses, housing assignment, visa, and general questions about living in Busan. My study abroad experience began when I was a sophomore at university. I was majoring in East Asian studies and went to South Korea to participate in a month-long summer program. I had such an incredible time there that I applied to study in South Korea again for two more semesters. During my time in Korea, I learned so much about the country and its people and traveled to many Korean cities, including Busan. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Gracie Paredes and I am the program manager for South Korea. I'm happy that you have joined us and I will be with you from the beginning of your journey to help you with the different aspects of your application, scholarship questions, uh, financial aid, payments, and any general questions you have regarding your preparations to go abroad. I moved to Seoul in 2009 with the initial intention to teach ESL for one year. Uh, South Korea is such a unique and special country that its energy and traditions and people really captured my heart and I ended up staying a little bit longer and I eventually went on to further my education at Sogang University where I received my Master's in International Relations and East Asian Studies. I spent a total of eight years living in Korea and recently moved back to Austin, Texas where I am excited to be able to help all of you experience such an eclectic and amazing country. Uh, Katya and I are dedicated to help assist you with any questions that you may have. So if you feel that uh, you need anything, we want to make sure that you're as prepared as possible before you embark on your study abroad adventure. Um, the third member of the Busan team is Yesul Park, who is our on-site support located in Busan. She is available to assist you with anything from city life to academics, uh, adjusting to being abroad. She will be guiding you on your excursions and all of your cultural activities. And Yesel is also the contact person in case you need to make an appointment with the doctor, have any emergency, or if you need anything of immediate assistance. South Korea is one of the rapidly developing countries and home for such companies as Samsung, LG, Hyundai, Kia, and many others. The phenomenal growth of Korean popular culture encompassing everything from music, movies, drama, to online games and cuisines known as a Korean wave, made South Korea an appealing destination to visit and study. While Seoul, its capital city, is an ever-changing, bustling city, Busan offers another side of Korea. It is located on the southeastern tip of the Korean Peninsula and is right on the Pacific Ocean. With that being said, it provides a more intimate and relaxed beach atmosphere, full of culture and tradition. It is still the second largest city in the country and has developed public transportation system, extensive shopping malls, and lively nightlife, to name a few. Busan gives great access to some off-the-beaten-path places for students to explore. There are so many towns nearby, like for example Gyeokje or Gyeongju, that preserve traditional Korean spirit. If students want to visit Seoul, they can take a three-hour bullet train ride and be there and back all within one day. Or they can even take a ferry that goes straight to Japan's closest city, Fukuoka. Okay, so we know that you're sold on Busan, but why with ISA? So students going to study abroad in Busan will receive a comprehensive pre-departure, on-site and re-entry support. ISA has full-time staff members in Seoul and our student coordinator, Yesol, in Busan, who are available anytime. ISA takes students' health and safety seriously, so medical insurance is included in each program, and we offer 24-7 emergency line support. 
Busan is the most affordable ISA program in Asia. So the program offers extensive excursions, cultural activities, housing, and a meal plan all for the pro uh, all in the program price. Currently, ISA is the only provider in the US that offers programs in Busan, so it really is an exclusive opportunity. So first of all, let's take a look at the programs offered at Busan National University or PNU. So PNU is one of the top universities in Korea, and here you can take classes from three great schools, the College of Business, the Department of Global Studies, and the Korean and East Asian programs. Students who are majoring in political science, international relations, Asian studies, any business classes will find a variety of enticing classes to choose from. Both semesters are 16 weeks long. The spring semester typically runs from the end of February to the end of June, and the fall semester runs from mid-August to late December. All of the courses are taught in English with the exception of the Korean language courses and are taught by local and international faculty. You will be able to experience studying with other ISA students, international students, and local students. Busan University also offer, offers a buddy assistance program, so each student is paired with a Korean student to help with different aspects of living in Korea. They'll provide you with an inside track of campus life, information on where to find student resources, they can help provide you with language and cultural exchange, and they'll give you basically the ins and outs of the events and the activities that are happening in the area. Most importantly, it will offer you the opportunity to make a long-lasting friendship. During summer, students can enroll in one of the two summer programs at PNU. We call them Summer 1 and Summer 2. Summer 1 consists of five weeks of intensive academic courses in English and a Korean language and culture class. Each course lasts three hours and is offered daily from Monday through Thursday. On Fridays, students will participate in cultural activities organized by PNU or ISA. Students can take two courses in this program. Summer 2 is a three-week program focused on understanding and experiencing various aspects of Korean culture, both traditional and modern. This program is composed of integrated Korean language and culture class and experiential learning through various cultural activities and field trips. Like the semester programs, summer students will also be enrolled in the body assistance program. And as a bonus, U.S. citizens are not required to apply for a visa to go on these programs. So we all know that uh, studying abroad can be costly and ISA helps to make it affordable by offering multiple scholarships for different programs. So in order to be eligible for any of the scholarships, students must be accepted and have submitted their application by the scholarship due dates for each of their respective terms. So if you look on the screen, you can see that for the fall semester, it is April 30th, for the winter and spring semester by October 30th, and for the summer program by February 28th. Uh, in addition, ISA also offers incentives for returning ISA students and their siblings. So ISA provides special grants to students that are participating in more than one term. So if you're doing a back-to-back -back program, or if you're doing, say, you do a fall program and then you decide to come for a summer program, you'll receive a grant for that. Um, if you are a sibling of an ISA alumni or if you choose to become a global ambassador for ISA, you will also receive uh, these special grants. There is definitely something for everyone, so make sure that you check the ISA webpage to see if you are eligible and then submit your application as soon as possible. Okay, so housing is included in the program price. Each room has its own bathroom, two desks, two beds, and two closets. Also, I would like to mention that Busan is the only ISA program in Asia that has a seven-day-a-week meal plan included in the cost of the program. On the other hand, students can select an independent housing option and receive a discount from ISA that equals the amount of the housing portion of the program price. But ISA is more than just taking classes in a foreign country. We want to make sure that you get as much out of the experience as possible. So a primary objective of ISA program is to facilitate the learning and development of students. We rely on the host university to provide quality instructions in the classroom, but ISA is the main facilitator of learning outside of the classroom. Our efforts to promote student learning are shaped by an educational framework we call ISA Discovery Model. 
So according to this model, students' learning and development is organized into five different areas of discovery, intercultural, historical, sociopolitical, professional, and environmental. So throughout the duration of all ISA programs, we provide participants opportunities to pursue guided learning in these five areas of discovery through participation in ISA excursions, cultural activities, and community involvement. Uh, per, upon arrival, your first stop will be in Seoul, and there you will uh, participate in the Bridging Cultures Program, or the BCP. The BCP is the ISA on-site orientation, and it's delivered to all students on the first days of their ISA program. Uh, the focus of the areas is related to goal setting, intercultural awareness, diversity, and professional development. The BCP is designed to help ISA educate students to give students the tools that will facilitate discovery and learning during the program. Uh, the BCP is an important introduction to a new culture, a new home, and a new experience. Uh, we do offer excursions as well, so since you will be in Korea for a short amount of time, it's important to see and experience as much as you can. So ISA offers a plethora of excursions and cultural activities. You will get to experience Seoul and the famous DMZ or the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. Uh, you'll also enjoy excursions to Gyeongju, Tongyeong, and Goje, and you will even have the option to travel to Tokyo, Japan. Uh, in addition to the excursions, you will have the chance to participate in many different cultural activities throughout the city and really get to experience all that Busan has to offer. So uh, this wraps up our presentation. We would like to go ahead and open it up to any questions that you may have. Uh, there is a chat box available where you can type your question and as they come in, we will do our best to answer them. Okay, so there is a great question. And the question is, how do students apply for their visas? As a site specialist, I will go ahead and answer the question. Uh, students going for a semester program in South Korea will need to apply for a D2 student's visa. In order, to be able, in order to be able to apply, students should receive an acceptance document from ISA and PNU. We usually send those documents in a mail four to six weeks before the program start date. Enrolled students will have a form in their student portal that outlines the visa process. Students who are not yet enrolled can go to ISA Busan website page and click on Embassy and Student Visa tab for more information. Students can apply for the visa in person or by mail and it's a fairly uncomplicated process and takes no longer than 14 days. Students, however, who have Korean heritage should immediately notif notify me or Gracie because that fact may affect your visa eligibility. Okay, I have another question. Is it only for U.S. citizens? Uh, no, this program is not only for U.S. citizens and we are open for, we accept students from other countries as well and uh, Gracie, would you like to add something about that? About the acceptance? Uh, yeah. Do we accept only U.S. citizens? Or, or oh, no, we can accept from all different programs. You would just need to notify us before. Uh, let us know that you are, from, are applying from a different country because there are a few different application materials that you would need to fill out. Um, but it's nothing more than some acknowledgement and making sure that you are um, you're prepared when you go abroad which leads me to the other question that we have, um, which is, are there any safety concerns in South Korea? Um, that's a really good question. We get this a lot from students who are going abroad and um, they want to, you know, their parents are usually the ones that are the, the most concerned. Um, so ISA really makes health and safety of all the students our top priority. Uh, we have on-site staff available 24 seven and a US-based emergency phone to so you can call if anything ever happens. Um, ISA also provides worldwide alerts on the website, which are updated anytime there is an incident that affects cities uh, where ISA has students. So here you and your family can check in to see what is happening in Korea or any other information regarding the safety of the students um, abroad. So it is important that you register also with the STEP program uh, with the embassy prior to going abroad so you can get updates, emails, or emergency notifications directly from the U.S. Embassy in Seoul. 
If you are not a U.S. citizen, please check in with your country's embassy to see what resources they have or uh, what they provide in case of emergencies. And that's the uh, responsibility of all students to make sure that you're registered before going abroad. Uh, also make sure that you notify ISA of any independent travels outside of Busan, whether it's in Korea or to another country. Uh, we need to make sure that we account for your whereabouts in case of an emergency. Uh, like with any foreign country, you want to just make sure that you exercise caution when you're out and about in the city. Uh, even though Korea is a fairly safe, safe country, you want to be aware of your surroundings. Uh, if you go out at night, you make sure you try to stay in groups. Um, the drinking laws in Korea are a bit more relaxed than they are in the U.S., uh, which can cause some issues. So just make sure that you're responsible, that you stay with friends, um, that you are aware of your surroundings. Um, also, during the BCP, you will receive a ton of useful information regarding safety while you are abroad. Could students do two summer programs back to back in Seoul and Busan? So they do one in Seoul and the next one is Busan. Can they do it back to back? Well, you, you would need, need to, to check, check the dates, dates. Um, make, make sure, sure that they, they don't, don't overlap. If you do back to back, back yes, you, we have a, a, a summer two program, program in Busan, and it's a three hour course that you take, um, and it's it's for three credit hours is what it's for. So after you finish the summer one program, you could go down to the Busan program. Okay, and the question is also, are there are there any programs available for undergrad students? All of these programs are for undergrad students. Right. Right, so if, if by undergrad you mean like uh, gap year students or high school students, uh, the summer programs that we have for Korea University are for gap year and for um, high school students. So the summer programs are definitely available for those. If you are... Um, trying to go to Busan. Unfortunately, we they do not accept gap year students. Um, we only have for the students who are currently, who will be sophomores by the time they are participating in the programs. So for Busan University, we do not accept gap year students or high school students, only undergrad. Okay, and the next question I'll answer myself and Allison asked, what do you think is the biggest challenge students face while in Busan, whether it be academically, personally, or culturally? Are there any unique challenges that students face while in Busan? And it's a really great question, and I'm glad that you're thinking about that ahead of time, because yes, there are certainly certain challenges. It's a different country with different culture, traditions, uh, the way people think may also be different. I would say students do experience uh, those differences, but they are, um, you can overcome them easily as any other challenge when you travel to an, a, another country. First, I would say um, academics are different in South Korea, the way professors teach. They try to lecture you more and have less opportunity for discussions. Also, professors like to maintain a certain level of respect so that you would not want to challenge them in front of the class or point their mistakes. Um, for culturally, I would say um, people in South Korea are more um, cautious about the age of each other. So um, what I mean by that is if you're talking to somebody who is older than you are or have, or ha or have a so higher social standard, then you are expected to act and speak in a more polite and um, in, a, in a more polite manner. Um, I would also say that being demanding in South Korea will not help you achieve your goals. Um, try to keep your face, try to still be polite and not be upset about something. And yeah, um, you don't have to speak Korean language to go study in Busan, but please understand that Korean people are not necessarily bilingual. There are multiple, many people, uh, especially on under 30 years old, that are proficient in both languages, Korean and English, but they still may not be as good as you expect, so that mutual understanding and patience is important while you're in South Korea. 
Okay. Um, Gracie, another question for you. I'm from Tunisia, so how different can, can that be to register for this program? So you would, um, the main part would be for the uh, visa process, might take you a little bit longer. Um, the only difference that we would have is we would need to make sure that your, in order to apply for the program, and this goes for anybody, uh, you need to submit a supplement page which makes sure that your credits will transfer. So depending on how your university will accept these credits, that will be the issue. Um, you would need to make sure that these forms are filled out from your university, so it might take a little bit longer um, to get these forms in. Uh, payment also might be a little bit different. Even though you make all payments towards the program through your student portal, um, it sometimes is a little bit different with uh, international credit cards. Uh, financial aid might also be something that um, you might come across some issues with, or not necessarily any of these are problems, but they just might take a little bit longer to complete all of the application materials. So that's why I mentioned it might be a little bit different if you are from another country. Um, just the process might be a little bit longer, so it's important to uh, keep that in mind that you need to be a little bit more communicative with me or with Katya. If you have questions, make sure that you're asking. Um, if any issues come up, make sure that you're letting us know because we want to make sure we get everything in by the deadline and we make sure that we get your visa and all your application things in before the deadline because after that, it might become a problem to make sure that we have all of your materials for you to be able to go abroad. Great. So it looks like we do not have any more questions at this point. And thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, Gracie and I both love talking about South Korea and sharing the information about studying abroad there. After this presentation, I'll be sure to follow up with each of you with a link to a recording of this webinar. If you have any questions in the future, please feel free to reach out to us by email or by phone that you see on the screen. And again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.